Hello everyone, and welcome back to Muddlet Creep Garage. As you can see, we're not wearing our normal greasy work wrenching attire. We're wearing a lab coat, and that's because today we're debuting our brand new series called Quad Science. And what better way to kick it all off than answer the age old question, does adding air to my ATV tires make my ATV flow? Well, in short, I don't know. Let's figure it out. So, for demonstration purposes, we have a 25 by 9.5 Kenda Bear Claw standard tire on a 12 inch IPT Delta wheel, and this is going to be our test subject for the day. And I have a standard kiddie pool in front of me with full of just regular old garden hose water. And we're going to use these two five gallon pails from competing companies, there's not a turf war going on here full of standard garden hose water to push this tire to the bottom, starting at zero PSI. And we're gonna work our way up in pressure and see if by the end, those, this tire can float these two pails of water. And after that's done, we're gonna go over to the whiteboard and we're gonna give you a little bit more in-depth explanation on why what you're gonna see happen, happens. Let's get started. Let's start here by completely flattening our Kenda Bear Claw. We're going to take this valve core clean out. It's completely empty. Let me throw this valve core back in. Let's put it in the pool. Place this board on top for some stabilization. Let's get these buckets on there. As you can see, the tire is at the bottom of the pool. It floats just barely. I can move it with one finger here. So the tire is on the bottom, but it is somewhat floating. It's right on the edge of its buoyancy. Let's start by adding three PSI to the tire and see if that gives us any more flotation. So we have our tire aired up to approximately three to five PSI. I'm going to try to get it in the gauge here so you can see it, but just extremely low. You know, the pressure gauge barely moves. Let's test her out. There she is, right on the bottom. About the same to get her moving. Both buckets, as you can see, are still full, right to the top of water. Let's jump to 10 pounds and see if that makes a difference. So now we have our tire aired up to, sorry, let me get it in the screen here. 10 PSI, if you can see that, dipper in the water, we'll see if it makes a difference. Set our buckets on here. buckets distributed here. As you can see, I spilled water out of the buckets and it's still right on the bottom, just barely moving. You know, buckets of course, as you see I spilled some but they're still pretty full. Now let's do something crazy and we're going to bypass the manufacturer's recommended inflation level 
and go all the way to 20 PSI on this tire and see if we can make it flow. Now, I had this tire all the way at 20 PSI. Hopefully you can see that there. And we're gonna see if 20 PSI over inflating it past the manufacturer's recommended, we're gonna see if that allows this tire to flow. Oh boy, don't look any different so far. It's not looking good. So same buckets, haven't changed the amount of water in them. Well, still full, actually, partially not full because of me spilling it last time. And let me get these equalized out here. There. So we are still sitting right on the bottom. Here, before, I'm not going to cut it again here. I'm going to show you again. This tire has 20 PSI in it. Seen this tire the entire time. I haven't had time to haven't had time to let air out of it. 20 psi. So now that we've got a practical test, let me take you over to the whiteboard and I'm gonna explain to you why we saw what we just seen. So now that we have all the hard work done, grab yourself a beverage because I went through college once and it's always better if you can drink in class. So let's get some math done here. So there's two equations we're looking at. The first one is the buoyancy equation. The force of buoyancy is given by the density of water times gravity and then it's going to be looking at the volume of the tire. So then also we're looking at the force given by gravity. So that's going to be the mass of the tire in kilograms multiplied by gravity. So we can take our tire, go over to the scale, and we will get the mass of the tire. And we can figure out the force of gravity on the tire. The hardest part of this equation is going to be buoyancy. So we know the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, and we know the force of gravity is 9.81 newtons per kilogram. So the only part we don't know is the volume of the tire, and this is actually a pretty hard thing to solve for, so we're not gonna actually solve for it in this video. But what we're actually looking at is over here is a diagram of a tire and wheel cross section. So right here would be where your axle is, this is your rim, and we're actually looking for the volume inside of the tire all the way around. So this is actually gonna be an integral. You're gonna to have to take a bunch of little triangles, and you're gonna to have to optimize to the nth derivative, or nth integral, and figure out the actual volume inside the tire. Now there is ways to approximate this, but it's not gonna give you the most accurate answer. So, we're just not gonna solve for that, and we're gonna pretend it doesn't exist. Because also, well, not gonna pretend it doesn't exist, we're just gonna respect it and realize that goes into the force of buoyancy, because it obviously exists, and it's obviously important. The next thing to look at is we can only count the area that is under the water. So, pretend for a second you're standing on your side, and your water, let me grab a different color here, blue, is only covering this first third or so of the tire. Then our volume is only gonna be this. Also in our volume, we have to count in the volume of the carcass of the tire and the volume of the rim, any lug nuts, whatever should be underwater, valve stem, all of that. So you can see this can very quickly become a complex equation. But the only thing we got to worry about here is volume, because volume is going to be what changes. So here 
we can figure out that as your tire gets bigger, the volume is going to increase. Therefore, you're going to have more buoyancy or flotation. But also on the flip side, as you go to a bigger tire and as you change tire compounds, today our test subject was a Kenda Bear Claw, but there's obviously much heavier and much more aggressive tires out there, such as a High Lifter Outlaw or a Super ATV Assassinator. These are going to have a much higher mass due to the excess rubber, but they're also going to have a higher volume. So, to answer the question here, nowhere in here does tire pressure come into play. Therefore, there is absolutely no way we can increase the tire pressure of a tire and cause it to float. It's physically impossible. The only way would be if we were to add water to a tire and increase the mass, we could get it to sink or beet juice or beet fluid or antifreeze, kind of like you do in an older farm tractor. That would allow the tire to sink. Or there is one way we can get a tire to float by adding air pressure. And that, that actually involves ruining the tire. So, if we go too far over manufacturer's recommended air pressure, rubber does have an elastomer in it, of course, it's rubber. So, rubber will stretch. If we add so much air pressure inside of this here tire that the tire begins to balloon in an outward direction, it is very possible that given the right conditions, if we balloon this tire, out past its current point, let me get a different color here. We balloon this tire all the way out to here. We are increasing that volume. Therefore, we have a bigger multiplier in the buoyancy equation and that number gets bigger. And what we're looking for here is we want F of B to be greater than F of G. Now, what we were doing by adding water buckets on top of the tire was we were actually making F of B essentially equal to F of G. And that is why our Kenda Bear Claw sat at the bottom of the pool, right at the very bottom and almost floating. We had underwater and it was just kind of barely kissing the bottom here. That's because I played around with water to make F of B equal to F of G. So, now that we've ruined one lab coat and we've got a good explanation and finished our beer, now we know that no matter how much air pressure you add to your tire, unless you get to the point where you've exceeded the elastomer compounds in your rubber, there is absolutely no way you are adding water to your, or adding air to your tires to make them float. So if you all have any ideas on future videos we could do relating to quad science, quad myths, let me know down in the comment section. So if you like what you've seen, please hit subscribe and thank you all for watching Mudlet Creek Garage.